This episode of Comics for Fun and Profit is brought to you by Threadless. More importantly, the Comics Fun Profit shop on Threadless at comicsfunprofit.threadless.com where you can find, oh, about half a dozen different designs, plenty of Comics for Fun and Profit themed merch. If you just want a t-shirt, you're good. And if you want sweatshirts or other swaggy items, man, you can get anything. Phone cases, shower curtains. It runs the gamut. Skateboards, I think. <laughs> so check that out. Uh, we've already sold several. We're excited about the fact that the folks that want to support us in this way are able to and uh, wear our merch out into in the real world. That's pretty exciting stuff. So uh, yeah, get your comics for fun and profit branded items at comicsfunprofit.threadless.com. Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle Andrew with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 858. Even though I said we were in the 860s last week, I cannot read. Four comics series are coming out October 17th and October 18th. But before doing I get into what's coming up in your local comic book shops this coming Tuesday and Wednesday. True, it's good to hear from you. How are things? Uh, pretty good. Um. Bad news from uh, comic creator, legendary oh, yeah, comic creator that. Keith mm-hmm. Giffen, Giffen died, and um, so our our robot overlord sent us uh, it, 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 his his top ten uh, <laughs> comics in celebration of his life of of creativity and what he's given to us as comic readers. So sad go. day. Um, and you're not going to get any of these because you don't read you didn't read this stuff back then. So <laughs> I'm going to guess you're not going to get any. Do you have do you know what Keith Giffen has written? Didn't he create some Guardians of the Galaxy stuff? No, no. Well, oh, no, it was Rocket. It was Rocket, Rocket, Rocket Raccoon. Oh, OK, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's I remember, not I remember the well, the blurb is logo is Lobo and Rocket creator is what I saw. Yeah. OK, that's cool. Um, they have. In order, um, his, the best Keith Giffen comics of all time, uh, his creations. Um, okay. Number one, Legion of Superheroes. He had a significant run on the title, and not- most notably the Five Years Later era, which brought a darker and more complex storytelling approach to the Legion. This is one I've never read, and gotcha. it seems to be universally beloved by folks but I've never read it. What I have read is number two on the list, Justice League International. Hey, there we go. um, Which, uh, that was Giffen and DeMatteis together, and it was a humor-driven Justice League. That's with Guy Gardner years and all that stuff. Really great run. I love that. And number three, they have Ambush Bug. um, Who? Which was Ambush Bug, which is also a humor comic. Um, from the 80s and 90s. Uh, rank four, we have Lobo. Um, okay, there we go. So for his a long run on that series and creating that series. Um, at rank five, we have Blue Beetle. Uh, his work on the blue and gold era of Blue Beetle was highly regarded for its humor and character development. So five is Blue Beetle. Number six is Trencher, um, which is a lesser known title but showcases Giffen's talent for blending humor and dark storytelling. At seven, we have uh, Doom Patrol, often oh, cool. often referred to as the Teasdale Imperative, which brought a fresh and quirky perspective to this team of misfit heroes. We have eight, the Thunder Agents. Uh, Giffen worked on a revival of this classic superhero team, infusing it with modern sensibility. Nine was The Heckler. Uh, Giffen co-created this comedic superhero series that parodied various comic book tropes and was known for its humor. I also never heard of this one, so that's something I'll have to look up. Uh, and number 10 was Scooby Apocalypse, one of my oh, favorites. That, that's awesome. I remember that. Yes, definitely. Giffen reimagined the Scooby-Doo gang in a post-apocalyptic setting bringing a darker and more action-packed tone to the familiar characters. That's awesome. Definitely one of my favorites. So I did. I haven't read as much Giffen as I thought. Like, Giffen and Demetrius, 
when the, I, I've read their stuff, but I guess I, I haven't read some of the stuff that I guess that Giffen is known for, at least on this list. So I've missed a few of these. I've read some Ambush Bug, read some Lobo, um, read all the Justice League International. Didn't read Trencher. Um, uh, didn't read a lot of uh, Thunder Agents. I don't think I've read that. Um, not sure I read his Doom Patrol. Um, but, uh, no, I haven't read the Trencher or the Heckler. So those are both outside my wheelhouse. So I've got some holes in my Giffen thing. Yeah. Um, uh, he was a great creator, though. Uh, I did see his final post um, that he left on social. It was, um, it says, I told him I was sick. <laughs> anything, anything not to go to New York Comic Con. Thanks, Keith Giffen, 1952 to 2023. Wah ha 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 ha. So I don't know if he if he posted it or he it was posted for him, um, but he got the last laugh, which is kind of cool and makes nice. like, perfect sense for for him if you've read some of his wah ha ha Justice League run. So. Um, very, very sad, bittersweet news, but we celebrate his life uh, because our oh, our overlords, robot overlords, told us to. There we go. And uh, I agree with their list. It's not too bad, not too shabby. Very cool. Yeah. Kyle, I've got the solution to our dreary, dreary evenings. We can um, we can we can pop a little magic mind and Ooh. get a little pick me up and and still still go to sleep. Just enough to give us some some clarity of mind, uh, a, a little creativity, get the creative juices flowing. Maybe give you one or two before the podcast, you know, <laughs> to really focus you in. Uh, what you you think fall of that? asleep during one podcast, and all of a sudden that's your problem. Uh-huh. But yeah, absolutely. The worst thing you want to do is you know brew a pot of coffee at middle of the night right before a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Then you're up the entire evening. What you need is good sustained energy, clarity of mind. Not, you know, a jolt of caffeine that hurts yeah. your body and all these things. Absolutely. And uh, Magic Mind uh, does all that stuff and has that, uh, okay, matcha. I want to talk about matcha, Drew. Okay. All right. The the green vegetable matcha, that, that, that buzzword, that superfood. I didn't think I'd like matcha. I uh-huh. am starting to like matcha. And that's one of the big key ingredients here is that. That uh, that lovely green superfood that has the benefits of all the uh, uh, keeping you going. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it, it's cool stuff. It, it's pricey, uh, mm-hmm. matcha is, but they stick it in this uh, with with some great other ingredients, all natural stuff. Um, so, but you you can get it through us with our code. So we want you to check out this Magic Mind Elixir. Check this out. It is go to magicmind.co slash comics fun profit. And elixir really is the perfect word for it. It's a nice little elixir. It's very yes, cool. For sure. If you, if you feel you want to try this out, go to magicmind.co slash comics fun profit and use our code. You can get um, 20% off uh, of an initial one time purchase or up to 56% off of a subscription. So if this sounds good to you, go to magicmind.co slash comicsfunprofit and use our code CFP. You can get up to 50%, 56% off your subscription for the next 10 days with the code CFP. Or you can just use that discount code CFP at magicmind.co slash comicsfunprofit to get 20% off a one-time purchase. Just to sample, dip your toe, check it out. Time for a break from our show to pay the bills. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the C4 fap links you could ever need all in one place. You can provide feedback, listen, support, share, enjoy these. We have our Patreon there. You can buy us a beer or a coffee. You can check out our Instagrams, our Twitters, our Facebooks. Check out our YouTube page. You can email us. You can listen to our podcasts on Patreon, if you're a subscriber, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on Podbean. We have Google Podcasts on there. We have an Amazon wish list. You want to buy Kyle and I something? Fine. 
you can do that here. We appreciate it. We have Kyle's RPG podcast listed on there, so you can check out his Dork Day Afternoon offerings. We have Cowabunga links, so you can check out the Cowabunga Deep Discount FOC and pre-order list. Get on that. That's our LCS, so you can check that out as well. And we want to just give you opportunities to say hi, to check out what we're doing, support us if you would like, or just listen. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the C4 FAP links you could ever need. Thanks. Back to the show. What do we do when we don't have a catalog, Kyle? Do we go right into cover price or do we go into FOC? We go right into cover price. Right into cover price. Let's do that. Yeah, we head to our good friends at coverprice.com. Let's go ahead and start with the secondary market. Start with how things are doing online. And Drew, we're starting in some very familiar places. We're starting with Dazzler Volume 1. This book continues to dazzle its way up the charts. (laughs) Last Monday, Taylor Swift attended the Kansas City Chiefs game with her friends, and obviously this Thursday as well. Need more exciting news? Well, what if we said her friends were Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool, blah, blah, blah. Same old, same old. Still doing that speculation stuff. 70 copies huh. in the last seven days. That's Up to nuts. 258 bucks. That's not too bad. Yeah, 258 for CDC 9.8 and just very fine rolls, 15 bucks. Spawn, number one, continuing to move like crazy. 74 copies moving in the secondary market for that. 180 bucks for CGC 9.8 and 29 bucks for near rents. I talked about this at one point when we were going through stuff. Cyberpunk 2077, trauma team number one. Nothing will send a book into the spotlight like news that a live action project is in the works. Last week, CG Project Red announced that the popular video game would soon be in production. However, whenever this will, whether this will be a movie or a television series was not clarified. The showrunners are a company named Anonymous Content. They are the creators behind shows like Mr. Robot and True Detective, making it more likely that Cyberpunk 2077 will be a series. This first issue in the series is making waves, likely due to its relevance to the movie and its affordability as a key comic. 35 copies in the last seven days, $91 for CDC 9.8, and near mints, 16 bucks. What can you do? You know anything about Cyberpunk in the world? I do not. No. And there was there's actually a very cool uh, anime on Netflix that was made called Ed, uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners that gives you a, a cool into this. It's um, very much a society based on. Uh, you know, augmenting yourself with cybernetics and things like that. But the more you aug your, uh, augment yourself with cybernetics, the more it kind of fractures your soul and your humanity and you eventually go nuts. And when, you know, you become too cybernetic and then you lose control of your own self, um, somebody's got to take care of you as well. So it's it's a very cool world that they've built. And, uh, of course, the trauma team is also when you die, if you have enough money, someone will save you. If you don't have enough money, no one will save you. So it's a cool world. So uh, I can see them doing some really cool things. So I'm very curious whether this is going to end up being a live action or they're going to do another anime because they had very good success with the Edge Runner series on Netflix. Oh, very cool. Yeah. At rank four, we have X-Men Volume 1, number 130. And specifically, we talk the newsstand variant. And again, Dazzler. Boy, this is going to be a letdown if she's not actually the, in the role. Oh, I have so many friends taking their kids to the Eras Tour um, movie yeah. opening tonight. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be nuts. <laughs> High sale of $600 for CDC 9.6. And Rawls, $181 as copies flood and still stay on the market. So, oh, my. At rank five, we have that Wolverine Virgin variant that was one per store, still selling, still 46 copies moving in last week. $858 somebody paid for a raw. I don't get that, but I mean, you can get it for like 65 bucks. That's that's so, crazy. Yeah. You think they actually paid it or that was just like a Sh- they, yeah, they shit like, against half? Yeah, they were drunk. Exactly. We've all done that on here. Oh, yeah. At rank six, Department of Truth, number one, um, the Martin Simmons cover A. It's old news the Department of Truth is headed to Netflix in 2021, or was headed to Netflix in 2021 due to extenuating circumstances of the writer's strike most recently held to production. 
There has been little news since then. This past week, rumors started floating around that Tinny and himself had confirmed that the Netflix series was moving forward and was back in production. This came directly via his 9.26 new lit- newsletter, where he stated, Martin and I were coming up on what we knew was going to be a brief sabbatical on Department of Truth while I worked on the television adaptation, which I'm excited to get back into now that it looks like the WGA strike is over. When you read that, there is no confirmation of continued traction on the project, yet the internet twisted his words a bit and ran with it. Recently, Tinian did return to X, aka Twitter, after a one-month hiatus. This return was to promote a new bootleg variant of the Department of Truth number one, which may have also helped a spike slightly in interest for this first print. That's a long, convoluted way of saying we had 31 copies sold, $85 for DGC <laughs> 9.8. And at rank 7, we have a beautiful comic, Transformers, number one, the one in 100s foil. All the reasons in the world to have this thing. 25 copies moving, high sale of 180 for a raw, settling down with Nearman's at 137. At rank 8, we have a, another comic I'm very familiar with. Batman 609. Back in 2022, a promotional website for the Batman had used had users solve puzzles that the Riddler had posted with a video of Thomas Wayne's campaign promotion. The solved riddles unlocked this video, quickly flashing the words hush across the screen. Fast forward to today, a recent interview with the hot Mike with Jeff Snyder and John Roca was very cryptic about hush being the next villain. This was hardly a confirmation, but rather more fuel to the already established rumor. Nevertheless, this was enough to fuel for fans to track down the first appearance of Thomas Elliot, who would later become Hush. 21 copies sold, $175 for CDC 9.8, and 39 bucks for Nearmints. At rank 9, we have Helverine. We've been talking about that. That's, of course, Wolverine 36, just the standard regular cover. You can get excited about regular covers, too, people. You don't need ratios. Exactly. Yeah, the second print retailer incentive, 1 in 25 pre-orders have already reached $75 for those. But we ain't talking about that. We're talking about the 18 copies sold of this one, 170 for a CGC 9.8, and 22 bucks for Dear Mints. And at rank 10, we have this beautiful Birds of Prey, number 2, 1 in 50. Before release, we saw pre-orders for this book skyrocket for this bubblegum cover with a high sale of 200 bucks. Last week, we saw more of the same, but hit as high as 276. Bubblegum covers have become a big collector's item, and this recent cover release prov- uh, proves that value and that it can pull. Schmidt illustrates a beautiful Black Canary cover that fans are all hunting down. 17 copies. Near mints settling at 154, but boy, is it tough. Yeah. At rank 11, we have Void Rivals number four. Um, this book has slowed significantly as Transformers number one hit the shelves. Despite that, this book made our list. Fans love Shockwave, and his new design fits the overall universe Robert Kirkman is building. The tease of Shockwave was enough to get a lot of fans pumped up, as the character has tons of history behind him and room for a whole lot more so but we only sold 17 copies high sale of 89.95 for a near mint raw um and yeah so high went high was 90 dollars. they're they're averaging around 75 um at rank 12 we have dazzler the printing error number one um led some fans to rediscover this printing error variant which they're calling a variant in quotes this was Marvel's first direct-only book with no copies hitting newsstand. They were still working out the kinks and books with black and white ads on page 24 and 25 hit the market they were supposed to be in color. 42 years later, it's seeing a resurgence <laughs> thanks to the growing subset of collectors who love error books. We so, tracked 15 copies and a high sale of 264 for 98, Rawls around $17. So there's one thing that kind of makes me kind of... Uh, we missed it. Talking about that Void Rivals 4 with Shockwave on the cover, right? Yeah. Well, Shockwave also is the guy who has my favorite Transformers covers of all time. 
it's the one where it's got a shockwave there and it says all are dead behind him. Have you seen that one? Oh yeah, that's a good one. And that was issue five. And I was hoping they would correlate issue five with the shockwave cover on this series as well. But they were one too early, so. Well, maybe they will. I don't know. We don't know what the what five looks like yet, do we? Yeah. Hopefully, it's a, you can get an homage of that All Our Dead cover because I love that cover. It's it's a classic. Yeah, I own two of them. At rank thirteen, we have um, Spidey Spider Man twenty ninety nine number one. <clears throat> it's not really a first appearance, uh, <laughs> but they're gonna say it is. Um, thirty eight copies sold with a high sale of one hundred forty six dollars for a CGC nine eight Rawls around twenty one bucks. At 14, we have Amazing 300 Venoms First, now selling for $3,800 for a CGC 98 with Rawls around $688. At rank 15, we have the Infinity Gauntlet, number one. Um, this is selling why? Oh, because Thanos is getting a new comic re released, so people are oh, yeah, excited right. about it, I guess. Yep. Um, that's funny. 14 copies move with a high sale of $201 for a CGC 98 Raws around 44. At rank 16, we have all new Wolverine number one, the Bing Gal. Um, this is X23. Um, and I guess she's going to be in Deadpool 3 as well. So that's got people excited. Hype 22 copies sold. Um, high sale of 125 for a CGC 98. Current Raw is around $26. This Deadpool 3 is really driving a lot of sales. I hope it actually gets made. <laughs> you know, getting, well, I mean, we've seen things on the set, so, I mean, it, it is moving. <laughs> right, but it got squashed when writer strike and actor strike, right? Yeah. So it's not finished. Not finished, but it, they will go back, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, is, actor strike's not over yet, is it? Well, I thought... I don't know. Well, the writer's writers, writers strike. That's right. right. I forgot. They're two separate entities. I don't think the actor strike is over yet. So you can write all you want, but I don't think you can. <laughs> but there ain't nobody to talk uh, about. Nobody to say them words. <laughs> I don't know. At rank 17, we have Superman for All Seasons, number one. A classic. Um, and James Gunn. keep Dunn calling this it. book Man for All Seasons. <laughs> I said that? No, I keep calling oh. it because I was talking to somebody about it. And I was like, you know, man for all seasons. I think that's a George Clooney movie called. Yeah. Man for all seasons. Um, 22 copies sold. I sale $12 for a raw. Um, currently, the very fines are selling for around eight. It probably costs six or seven. So <laughs> <laughs> not great. Um, at rank 18, we have Web of Spider-Man number one. Black suit Spider-Man. Great cover. Love this book. Um, 15 copies sold, high sale of 225 for a CGC 9.8, Raw's around $24. At rank 19, we have Ultimate Fallout 4. This is first Miles Morales, of course. 21 more copies of this moved, a uh, high sale of 1500 for a CGC 9.8, Raw's around 600 And rounding out of the top 20, we have New Mutants 98, um, first Deadpool. And we got moved 14 copies of this, high sale of $1,475 for a CGC 9.8, and raw for around 330 So that's interesting. Uh, New Mutants 98 sells for about the same as Miles Morales. So mm-hmm. first Deadpool and you know in the CGC 9.8's realms, but the but the raws, the the average on Miles Morales is significantly higher than the Raws on the the Deadpool, which is surprising. Um since it's older. Yeah. So yeah. I would think I would think those near mint Raws would be worth more. But Maybe they're not. Print run difference. Could be. Could be. Um I'm curious about that. I thought that it's got it's gotta be it, right? If I had to guess. Yeah. But man, I mean this is what year was New Mutants ninety eight? That's like Back in the late 80s, early 90s, right? Mm. So there was a crap ton of overprinting back then. Way more than way more than it would have been during the Ultimate Fallout days. So, yeah, they printed a lot more back then than they would have during the Ultimate Fallout days. So I don't think it's overprinted. I mean, I don't think it's a print run deal. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll look into this. 
Oh no, that is, that would be that is, that would be Kyle. Actually, you're right. So that's why it's lower because there's more of them. Yeah, correct. You're right. You're right. You are correct, sir. All right. Put me on my misery. Let's go FOC. <laughs> of course, FOC is our final order cutoff. It's our last little bite of the apple to add a few things to our order. And I can never forget it because I get this really cool list emailed to me every Friday but our good, at our good friends from Deep Discount Comics in Cowabunga that says, hey, these are the things you need to order and make sure are on your order that you may have missed. Here's the prices. We make it easy for you. Don't go chasing things on the site. So Drew and I like to scavenge through and see what we can find. And we invite you to come along with us and see what we can find through there. Let's start with our lunar distribution items and see what's going on for items for the 15th. You know what? You're going to be surprised. I do not hate the Todd, the Todd McFarlane toy cover what? Oh. for Batman yeah, I 139. Thought those were cool. I actually kind of cool, like yeah. that. Um, I think that's pretty neat. Yeah. And uh, there's an endless probably variety of these mm-hmm. that they could do. Um, because I'm sure McFarland Toys has done the most of DC, right? Yeah. If not yeah. everything. Um, so that's kind of cool. I, I like it. I didn't think I would like it. I thought I would think it was cheesy, but I actually think it's kind of interesting <laughs> the way they did it. Yeah. And I kind of like the foil bat symbol glitch variant. It's almost a virgin as well because they've taken the top heading and stuff off. So Yeah, I'll cool. be curious to see what that looks like in real life. Birds of Prey, Otto Schmidt looks great. A lot of love for Black Canary <laughs> on these Birds of Prey covers. Yeah. You know, four or five characters in there. They all seem to be... She must be the leader. I know I've read it. I've read the first one. <laughs> Seems like it stuck out quite a bit for you. Yeah. Well, I can't remember, I guess. I like another the Fire and Ice Smallville cover. At Sozo Miyakiya. I'm very, very much drawn to her covers. They're Is really that the good. one with the Polaroid yeah. picture? Yeah, it's okay. These Joker covers are awful. Twisted. <laughs> yeah, as you'd expect. Mm-hmm. I'm taking a peek at the Madness issue four. Um, not really replicating the cool covers of the first issue. That Cover C has got kind of a neat, uh, a weird... Almost CD cover. Yeah, it does. It does what that is kind of what it looks like, isn't it? Yeah. Trade for my boy Nightwing. All these Poison Ivy and not a Jenny Frizen among them. Not a Frizen among them. Not a Sozo Miyake among them. She's been uh, transplanted by Otto Schmidt. Transplanted, I guess, is kind of punny. <laughs> I get it? Could use a boy. Hey. Um, the toy variant for Superman 78, the metal curtain number one, is kind of cool. And it's it's a both a toy variant and an homage to Action Comics 1. What do you think of the um, two Shazam Jaws or Great White Shark cover? That's kind of cool. Yeah, that was neat. I like that one. The Megalodon cover. Okay, so I'm looking for that Superman. Which one is it? Your very next page. I, I just went one page farther than you. Oh, it's Superman 78. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it is a toy cover. It's a toy know. cover and an homage to uh, action. So are these drawn or photos, do you think? <laughs> I think they're actually just like drawn. setting the toy in and and uh, legit like. You think it's like shot shot with a camera? Yeah, I think so. Just curious. Interesting. Uh, do we go to 1016 then as well? Yes. Black Science. Those volumes are going to be awesome. Yeah, they are. Good 10th anniversary ones. The Deviant. Yeah, uh-huh. James Tinney and the Fourth, another one. And again, please start labeling stuff. This has been on Substack, but oh well. Gosh, it's how many Christmas friggin' story. covers? Yeah. Oh, man. But this is, oh, this is just FOC, though. It'll be a few weeks. Holy crap. Click on Petrol Patrol and look at how long the solicit is. That's insane. Petrol head? Yeah, sorry. I was thinking Paul Patrol when I clicked it and said Petrol Patrol. Lord. Me thinks you do doth try too much. They've got a lot to say. Come on. If you need that much to say, you're... That's exactly. Exactly. I'm like, 
That's an image book, though, right? Yeah. That's the one thing they didn't say in the solicitors. <laughs> I left that part out. <laughs> Do are all images getting Walking Dead homages or just some? Uh, I don't believe it was all of them, but it was it was like 20, 20 to 25 of them. Gotcha. Transformers issue two is out. That's my boy Starscream there on the cover. Or at least, I'm sorry, on the cover A. That's not, um. they're not going to get a Walking Dead cover. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. All right, let's slide on over to Boom. Abbott 79 gets their second. Oh, we've got the 10th issue of Damn Them All. Mm-hmm. Mech Cadets is on four. There's Zawa. This is Zawa? A, a Zawa. Boom. It's a boom box. In oh, yeah. Trapped inside her mountain by pollution spewing factories. The guardian spirit Zawa on industrial waste to eat, leading her to a bitter existence of paranoia and destruction. That's too woke for you. Uh-huh. There's an envir- environmental cause on there. You can't stand that. Sorry. You're out. Yep. Fantastic Four, 13th ish- issue out. That's cool. Immortal Thor. That looks like a Moon Knight yeah. on the cover. It does. That's for that Knight's End storyline. Mm-hmm. What's that um, Wookiee? Call it on is the she... cover of on the Doctor Afra cover. Is that the one from uh, Mandalorian? Yes, Black I something. Assume. Well, if you read the books, it's Black Kashyyyk. If you just watch the show, it's just Kashyyyk. I thought it was. They 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 nerfed him. <laughs> they took they took the word Black off of it. Oh, interesting. Star Wars Visions or Kersantan. I can't yeah. call him Kashyyyk. It's Black Kersantan. Yeah, it sounds bad. That sounds closer. So, what is Visions doing again? Is that that's blending a bunch of different? This things. is just peak Peach Pomoko. Centuries after the death of the great Darth or Dark Sith Lord, a cult has grown to worship the Sith. This is not a uh, canon book, probably. If Marvel is putting it out, it is canonical. They currently do not have a. Oh, okay. They, yeah. So following up the su- Superior Spider-Man one shot is the Superior Spider-Man number one. <sighs> Damn you! <laughs> but it's slotting Bagley, dude. So, but, but why? Why is this not? It's just you two. You just did. <laughs> yeah. Superior Spider-Man. I'm on, Called it a one shot, and now you're relaunching that. it. It's dumb. That. Because you get to do another Scotty Young here, and yeah, that is a I cool guess. looking Scotty Young with the. All tangled. Garbage pail kids. Does that take you back, Kyle? It really does. Oh, they're not they're not censoring all the covers on <laughs> Reviews World at the moment. Somebody's gonna lose their job. Yeah. All AG Adams family. <laughs> but it's definitely that's definitely based on the Netflix series. Assassin's Creed gets another number one. Now, is that um, going to be a movie or a series? Assassin's I, Creed. I, I believe a series. Gotcha. And there's a new game that just came out. Is that something you would watch live action? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long. <sighs> I mean, does it have a okay. storyline? Yeah, but a lot of it deals with being hooked, like almost the Matrix, hooked into an animus in all reality. Yeah. So there's a lot of really cool ways to do it. But um, I'm more involved with Ezio being in the old world than I am with the current world and the and the animus cover up stuff. We'll but, see what, yeah. what they do. They could ruin Blood it. Three. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Creep show. Does look creepy. Who's Speaking doing what we were talking about earlier, we have Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven XOXO, the second uh, issue of that. <laughs> This creep show is Zoe Thurgood, so I might want to. I re, might have to read this one. And Thurgood cover. Yeah, it's possible. Alacious number one from Massive Comics. Interesting. I almost thought it was Hellboyish for a moment. We heard um, if that 
Deviant was well received on the substacks. I'm not sure. So Hellacious for Massive is soon to be a animated series starring Anthony Kiedis of this Red Hot Chili Peppers. Huh. Okay. There may be something to look at there. Plus the Castlevania video game homage uh, cover C is very cool. Is he doing a voice or is I he would assume voice? a voice. I guess I can see the Castlevania there. It's kind of weak. Um, the collars are Castlevania. Yeah. Not any of the action. But they got collars and fonts, and that's good enough for me. <laughs> Mortal Terror number one from Dark by Dark. I think so. Well, maybe not. Mortality means life, and life means death. Uh, okay. I don't know, because I can't really grasp the concept there. Possibility. But Nadia Namobots. What's that about? Nadia and the Namobots. Uh, That's better. It's a little better. From Opus Comics. Emotions are sold in the streets. Called Namobots. They produce emo pills. <laughs> All right. You, you, you're not you're not going to be a fan of Petrol Head because of its long ass solicit. But it's well, way if you shorter. click on them here, they're not long solicits. Hey. Way shorter. Jump straight yeah. into the non-human race with 42 Robo Gorgeous launch issue story pages. Race against Robo Cops. Right. Toy number four has a Jaws homage cover and a nifty. Can I just pick Transformers every issue? You can. <laughs> there are no rules except for the ones I lay down. I was going to say, <laughs> your random ones. Except for my random ones. <laughs> I just sparsely enforce them. All right, just for fun, I'm going to steal Deviant number one from you. The $6 James Tinian book. You're doing that? Mm-hmm. Okay. I have so many open tabs. That's not, yeah. I'm like, I had like 14 different choices, so... <sighs> I hate to fangirl on Zoe Thurgood and pick her book, but, but I kind of want to. <laughs> but it's an issue three. You took Deviant. Hellacious didn't do anything for me. That Mortal Terror with the flip draft Dracula concept might be mm-hmm. something, especially if it gets optioned. I don't like. I don't think I wanted to go with the audible. I want to. Yeah, I think I'll go with the Mortal Terror. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right, Drew. Then I am heading on over to our good friends at C. No. Yeah, heading over to our good friends at CBSI or or ComicBookInvest.com. I want to look at their hot ten. You See were cover they... A, right? I was cover A. Yeah. Uh, look at their hot 10 and see what their thoughts are on the secondary market. And I'm going to start at issue number one, which is Omega Men number three. Over 60 sales this week with a lot of volume coming the past couple days since we heard about the unfortunate passing of Keith Giffen. Of course, we always see a spikes when creators pass. That is not the sole reason for this increased attention on this book, as rumors of Jason Malolis, which enrolls to Lobo in the future, have gained steam yet again. In an event, Lobo has a rabid fan base, and this book will keep coming back around. Rawls have gone from $40 to $70, and a CGC 9.8 is back to 400 bucks, where they were closer to 300 prior to that. At rank two, we have Transformers number one, the one in 100 foil we talked about. Since last week, set the market at of this one in 100 at 150 to 175, there have been an additional 30 plus sales. That's a lot of volume for a high ratio incentive like this. But with all the exclusive covers out there, there are a lot of copies like we mentioned prior. So just FYI. And I, at rank three, I didn't see this. I would have definitely picked this. 
American Psycho 1 in 10. They did a business card. <laughs> That's awesome. A blood-covered business. A fun variant idea to do the business card. If you've seen the movie, you get it. But about a dozen sales this week, mostly around $35 for this 1 in 10 incentive with a high pre-sale of $50. This was pretty tough to find pre-release, but last I checked, the publisher's web website still had copies available, along with all the incentives around the ratio. At rank four, we have Miss Marvel, the new mutant number one. Here we go. We have the second print, one in 25. Again, you know how we love those ratioed Ooh, second printings. Only a handful of sales on this 1 in 25 second print incentive variant, but they have been at quite the premium, reaching a high of $185, with the lowest being a pre-sale of about 100 Since release, it's been 120 to 150 Yes, this is just a black and white version of the art of the 1 in 50 incentive from the first print, but that hasn't scared off any. At rank 5, we have Batman and Robin number 2, the 1 in 25. The Lyrics Lee cover. About 20 sales this week on that one in 25 that featured a pretty cool Lyrics Lee shush cover. While a debatable first appearance as she appears in Shadow in the last issue, this has got the attention of collectors as most sales have been around ratio, but a few have crept up to 40 bucks. Kyle, how is that? How is that debatable? How would a how would a character appearing in Shadow be their first appearance? Do we not have precedent with one eight, Hulk one eighty and one, Hulk one eighty one? We know. Well, do you realize how much he is in one eighty? More than a Shadow. Yeah, he's in a ton. And he doesn't so get one eighty doesn't appearance. get yeah. doesn't get any credit. <laughs> exactly. So screw issue one and and you know what? Screw Shush. You know you're a derivative, right? <laughs> I don't know that we want to get into the derivative conversation about a hush. Oh, isn't there a hush? There and is now a there's hush. a shush. Yes, that's that. That's actually the the correlation of the two characters. That's kind of. <laughs> maybe it'll. I, I haven't read it yet, so maybe I should shut up and read it. <laughs> All right, at rank number six, we have Star Slayer number two. This first appearance of Rocketeer is seeing some move as we hear movement on the film reboot. The news is only a day old, so the sales will probably continue over the next few days, but there was enough of a move in the needle and put it on the list that we decided to note that the price jumped up to $30 to $40 for Rawls. Personally excited for this new direction for the Rocketeer, being a former Tuskegee Airman, and hope we can get a new comic series, too. That's I, comic I, book I, I could have seen this comic a million times in quarter bin and never even give it a second look yeah um, that's what was weird it looks it looks just like a garbage comic from the 80s mm-hmm. um so i would have i, I would have never known this was the first appearance of the rocketeer where how does he fit it how does it fit in is it like yeah. naturally part of the story or is it like a bonus story at the end i don't know great question yeah i don't know or perhaps he's just a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> At rank number seven, Batman 609, blah, blah, blah. Hush, blah, blah, blah. Maybe Lee and Loeb, man. That's a good yep. combo right there. It really is. There are a lot of copies of this Jim Lee classic out there, but Rawls are still hitting $50. Be aware that there's a newsstand version out there that that is well that could fetch a decent premium. At rank eight, we have Poison Ivy number 15, the one, excuse me for the <laughs> random yawn, the one in 25 Seb McKinnon cover. About a dozen sales this week, and prices are actually outpacing the one in 50, reaching $45. Most sales around 30, but this Seb McKinnon seems to have caught the market by surprise as it trends up from its release last week. Shocker, it's Poison Ivy and Harley kissing on the cover. Duh. Yeah. At rank nine, Cyberpunk 2077, number one. We talked prior about Cyberpunk 2077, Trauma Team, number one. This is just Cyberpunk 2077, number one. Another book you could probably find lingering out there for cheap, as it was only about $10 last week. But following some rumors that they may be adapting this game into a film or show with possible involvement from Keanu Reeves, 
since he is in the game. Prices have spiked this week to as high as 30 bucks. Not a ton of volume so far, with only about a dozen sales, but price of ri- has the prices has ri- have risen to over an average of $20. At rank 10, we have Bloodstone, number one. Gail Simone writing this. Michael Lopez on the cover art, and this is a quintessential 90s or 80s book. About 10 sales this week f- for just issue one, and a couple of the full four-issue miniseries sets. That doesn't seem like a lot, but this comic... After no sales the week before, I suppose Halloween fever has hit and folks are looking at the spooky side of comics again. She recently was featured in the Werewolf by Night one-shot comic special and returns in a colorized version of the Werewolf by Night Disney Plus series very soon. I personally prefer the red-haired Next Wave version of the character, but this is one that just keeps coming back this time of year. Notable sales are tracked as well. Fantastic Four, number one, 1966 Golden Record reprint. One of the earliest reprints of a Marvel classic. This issue actually came with a record. Go find it on YouTube as it is pretty funny to listen to today. And accepted $2,450 on a 6K asking price is still an impressive sale for this issue, considering it appears to be a decent raw copy. That said, the last graded sale was a CGC 9.2 for just over 1K about 10 days ago, and I'm not even sure this issue is as nice as that one was. Yeah, that looks like a 9.2 to me. Yeah, (laughs) and we have Superman, Batman, number four, Germany cover. This hand-numbered German Panini variant doesn't come up very often, let alone in CGC 9.8. CGC is inconsistent in how they handle this book, as some get the green label due to the hand numbering on the back cover, while others have gotten blue labels. Be curious if a reholder would get this one a blue label. I I don't get it. So it has Michael Turner has like like is one in 1,000 or something on the back? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know anything about that book. Mm, anyway. All right, Drew, it's time for the sneak peek at next week. The comic's coming out this Tuesday and Wednesday in your local comic book shop. Let's head on over to Lunar Distribution and find the items hitting on the 15th, starting right there. Starting, whoops, starting with... Uh, Batman, Superman, World's Finest, and the... Uh, is this Batman Day coming up? It must be. Yeah. Oh, um, that's the second print, so never mind. We already, it might have already happened. Or is it in November? I can't remember. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. We got a second print being ordered. Um, The Bjorn Barons, Batman, Superman. I kind of like... I kind of like him not doing creepy, crazy stuff. Him doing classic, yeah. old-school Batman v. Superman look. Posey, posy, Yeah. Um, it's interesting. So Keep is this that. You go. is this Joshua Sway Swabby Catwoman cover going to do anything or not? It's weird. Delato's, Black and white, probably not. Yeah, Delato's great as always. Yeah, he's got a formula. He knows how to do it. All the fables one sixty of one sixty two. We hit in the end, baby. You might want to start crapping him. The uh, hot, hot girl number four, there Chew, is pretty interesting. We're gonna do the Golden Age Flash, Jay Garrick, with a ton of covers. Oh, and we get the Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong poster. Those should be fun. Yeah. Maybe the uh, Jim Lee. And yeah, the Matina is pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Nightwing 107 has him swashbuckling on. A ship, so pirate, pirate Nightwing. I'm excited. He looks kind of deformed on that Del Auto. Yeah, I'm not loving that look. As far as Del Autos go, Lee Bermejo doing Superman cover, great one. David Finch doing a pretty good one too. Yeah, I still like that Bermejo. There's the iconic Jim Lee. Yep, Jim Jim Lee's no slouch. All right, on the 18th, 
We have Top Cal's Antarctica. Buffalo Soldiers. Beautiful Soldiers. Beautiful Buffalo. Soldiers. Bite Sized Tales of Terror. That's a Scout. That's, yeah, Scout. John Clark. I like these Scout um, Legacy comics where they're reissuing. Yeah, older stuff. Older stuff. I don't like the price, but still cool. Forged is back with issue five. Finally get hack slash. That'll be a fun one. Mm-hmm. Not sure I I don't like the fact that all the hexagon bridges look very similar. Yeah. I guess that's a stylistic choice. Local man has a ton of covers. Yeah, Kyle, you're right, because there's there's the madness issue three. Its mm-hmm. cover C looks like the Sex Pistols. CD. Yep. So now I, want, I need to figure out what that madness cover was, what CD it was going after. That's going to bother me now. They're uh, they're all punk derivations. So ah, uh, well, I wouldn't know all those. Yeah. Say. Scrapper at four. Ooh, Swan Songs is at four. <laughs> and then he throws the Where's Negan mm-hmm. cover homage. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Of all the of all the Walking Dead things to homage, a Where's Negan <laughs> comic. Down rare three flavor, days. yeah. Rare flavors for Boom went to a second print. That's cool. Oh yeah, I didn't read that. It's on my stack, but I haven't read it. Daredevil two. Of course, it wasn't really a new start, right? It wasn't new creator. Well, yeah, I think it was a new creator, maybe. I haven't read that one either. I guess guess what? I dropped Moon Knight. uh, Wow. City City of the Dead. Not not the regular one, but City of the Dead. Just like, you know what? I'm not enjoying this. I'm just going to stick with the main title. Here we go. Um, It's Jeff from Marvel going to a third print and a cool third print with the uh, the, uh, internal uh, paneling, I think. But a very cool internal paneling with Jeff acting as Falcon Cap. So I can't even I tell. There. What is going on? on it's oh, I Jeff see. Third oh, I, yeah. Okay, I see now. It was really small. I couldn't really see mm-hmm. what you could see. Sensational She Hulk. There's that lyrics to the other cover. Yeah. She's drawn too weirdly small. I don't like it. Yeah. Not sure I love it either. Any of those Star Wars do anything for you? Gotta love a Clone Wars incentive cover. That's cool. These cosplay covers on Dynamite. I think they need some like these girls need to put like some tanning stuff on. They're <laughs> always very pale. <laughs> well, they're inside reading comics. <laughs> Guess you're right. That's what the tanning spray on tans are for. Red Sonia 2023. Issue four, the cover D is a Bjorn Barron's cover, and that is really good. Man, mm-hmm. he does good. He does good stuff. So, finally, now all these, you know, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, and you know, all the other ones. We have Al Capone Vampire number one mm-hmm. in American mythology. So, what if Al Capone was a vampire? We have a, a book for Drew's heart here from Yen Press. Breasts are my favorite things in the world. <laughs> volume seven. Who knew? There were seven volumes of that. I'll wait for the anime. <laughs> Dwellings two. That's an Oni Press book. Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven XO XO number one. Beneath the skin, flesh, and cyberware lies a beating heart. And only two things can stop a heart from beating, love and death. It's gang-on-gang violence as the maelstroms target the moxes for an ambush. Is a bloodbath underway, or could this be love at first sight? Subgenre is a Dark Horse book by Matt Kent and Wilfredo Torres. Private detective in dystopian cyberpunk future. Cyberpunk future. Man, 
Man, that's tempting. It wasn't eight dollars. Man from Maybe is an Oni Press book by Jordan Thomas and Shaky Kane. Shaky Kane. Mm, that's interesting. A race to acquire a crash spaceship's cargo begins. So Saga 66 goes to a second printing. So sometimes Saga second prints spike a little bit too. Oh, yeah. Low print runs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Antarctic Press as the staple of some of the other like DC that do their their beach magazine slash calendar (laughs) special. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow Girl Beach Off special number one from Antarctic. All right, Drew. It's the point of the podcast where I ask for your sneak peek at next week. Pick of the week. Is there anything that jumps off the page at you? I think I'm going to go with subgenre number one, the Dark Horse Matt Kent book. There you go. About a private detective in a dystopian cyberpunk future. There we go. And with all the different craziness going along, I'm going to go ahead and take a flyer on Cyberpunk 2077 XOXO number one with all the optioning going on. Hey, maybe some of these people will end up in whatever Cyberpunk is doing in the future. So we want to thank you. Is that a uh, cover A? Cover A. It's a weird cover, but. but. All right. Cool. I want to thank you for tagging along with Drew and myself as we crawl through all the things really in the world of comics. And we, of course, talk about people we've lost in the industry and look at the old secondary mark. There's a ton of other stuff we do on the side as well. Those are things that you can always find at our Patreon at patreon.com and comics for fun and profit. We have a nice little Slack channel we go to and talk about different things and some exclusives and all kinds of fun. And you can be part of that for a few dollars there. So for Drew and for myself, see you. As you know, our LCS is Cowabunga Comics, Lake Country's Wisconsin's best pop culture destination for new comics, back issues, gaming, retro video games, vinyl, and figures. Give them a call. 262 269-9999. Check them out online at cowabungacomics.com or follow them on Twitter at Incredicow. Uh, They are our LCS and we utilize their deep discount mail order service to bring Oconomowoc, Wisconsin closer to us. They'll take care of you. Tell them Drew and Kyle sent you. Say hi to Eric and James from us. If you need an LCS, you can't go wrong with Cowabunga Comics.